Welcome to Define You Radio, the place to be for real talk and real tips to help you define your personal and professional life. Class is in session with your host, the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Pens and papers ready. Class is now in session. Welcome to Define You Radio, the place to be for real talk and real tips to help you define your personal and professional life. Class is in session with your host, the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Pens and papers ready. Class is now in session. You cannot turn on the news, YouTube, or any other social media without seeing a story about a racist incident. Today, we're going to share our experiences, thoughts, and more on dealing with racism as black women in America. Welcome to Define You Radio. I'm your host, Valencia Griffin Wallace. And of course, I'm joined by my two beautiful uh, card receiving, decoration receiving uh, queens. And if you want to know why I call them that, you're going to have to go back or go forward and listen to the show about the love languages. Queen LaVon and Queen Shannon, go ahead and say, hey, queens. Hey, everyone. Recently, there was a video of a man yelling out of his truck the words Ninja B, or either he said F and B. And I'm not going to, y'all can fill in the blank. We're all adults here, but this is a a grown-up show. Uh, But you can have your kids listen because it is very important that you have these discussions with your kids. So with that being said, Pens and papers ready. Class is now in session. Whew, let's woo saw. Mm. I hear the bass and Queen Shannon voice already. We ain't even started, mm. boy. <laughs> so, so, so I'm going to go to Queen LeVon first. Mm-hmm. What yes. is, is racism to you? Because a lot of people, just in case somebody is listening and don't know what it means, What does it mean to you? For me, racism is, it's not just the acts, but the thoughts um, and the feelings that um, a person has and may even express towards another person that they feel superior to, that they have a strong dislike because they don't look like them, they don't talk like them, they don't even sometimes don't think like them. Um, I think racism transcends um, just color. You know, it's it's more than color. It's more than race. Um, Because some people, I think, have some forms of racism against people because of their educational level, their social economic status. So for me, it's anytime you feel, think, or um, speak that, you know, that you think that someone is, that you're superior to someone, I guess would be the nicest way to say it, that you're superior or better than someone. Mm. Interesting. I I looked this up, um, prejudice versus racist, because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people use them interchangeably. Now, prejudice is the preconceived notion or something that is not based on a reason or actual experience. Meaning, so like if you think about, um, I would think when you think socioeconomic status or something like that, or um, I don't know, because the words, they're, they're like cousins. But what's funny Mm -hmm. in the definition of racism, it says racism is prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that your own race is superior. So Mm -hmm. they're, I would say they're like first cousins. Yeah. Because I could be um, prejudiced or prejudging 
somebody because of their economic status versus being racist against them, if that makes sense. Queen Shannon, can black people be racist? Um, can black people be racist? Um, there's a popular belief that they cannot be. However, if you're going to go based off of the, which, well, there's a couple of definitions, but if you're going to go based off of the, the primary definition, um, believing that your particular race possesses some kind of ability or something that makes you um, superior to other races, I would say yes, that black people can be racist. Do you know racist black people? Mm, no. Queen Levon, do you know racist would, black people? I would say yes. <laughs> Why you said it so low? <laughs> Cause you I would say yes, because I'm, you know, thinking about those definitions, how you put it, and then thinking about what Queen Shannon said. But I, I definitely believe, because I don't think, I think each race has some people that will be, you know, racist or have prejudice because I think everyone, you know, want to feel like their race is good or, you know, you know, feel proud of their race. So, but yeah, I would say yes. And I'm going to tell you, I don't like that definition that I got off the internet because to me, I think racism is an act. Uh, like Queen LeBron mm-hmm. said something about a thought earlier. To me, I'm like if you, and I, I will kind of get away from, from the thought, but my thing is if you verbalize or use that to attack me, that's racist. So you can think, you know, um, Black people are better than white people. White people are better than black people, Asians, Chinese are better than Japanese, whatever else. But if you act, um, impose that, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? As a racist mm-hmm. act. That's how, that's how I look at it. If you keep me from doing something or try to impose your will or your way on me, that's racist. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Would you say Queen. would you say, mm-hmm. Queen Val, that racism, depending on if you use it as a verb or an adjective? Because you know, sometimes we use it as an adjective to describe someone or to describe their behavior or their act or your but the way you just said it, it makes me think of it more of as a verb because it's it has to have action with it. I think when I when I think about racism, because honestly, I'm gonna be be 100. I have previously, previously, I have, but I've been accused of being racist before. Really? Um, right. And this was not inspired by me using any particular racial terms or whatever else, but it was, you know, certain things that I said. So, um, and, you know, that literally I have been accused of being racist before. And um, my grandmother, uh, because this was like forever ago, and my grandmother was like, she's not racist, she just don't like a whole lot of people. And so I do think I do have some, maybe some some prejudgments about different people of, you know, different races and all whatever. I don't, but I think my my actions would make me racist versus my thoughts. If that answers your question. Okay. Yeah. You more. It's more. You using it more as a verb than that. It's your action. It's the act. Right. That. It follows an act, yeah. Right. Because I think anyone that knows me um, and knows, if you knew me and knew my life, 
you would not think I was racist. But if you may hear my opinion about some things, you may think that. People may, may think that, if if that makes sense. Because I, I have been, you know, accused before of being racist. But if you ask someone of a different race, if I was racist, they'd say no, indeed. You know what I'm saying? Well, <clears throat> well, I'm just I'm I'm a little silent because there there's a difference in racism and racist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so we're, I mean, so so you know what I'm saying? Like racism is the simple belief. So honestly, I think to some degree we all harbor that belief at some point. Okay. Um, whether it's in retaliation, whether it's we were born to, to you know, to, with this belief, you know, this is the belief that we were taught. Um, but then the racist is someone that, that's when it becomes the adjective. Someone yeah. showing the discrimination, showing the prejudice, showing um, the feelings. They're acting on them now. See, like, now, I mean, if we're, like I said, you know, if I'm going to go, yeah, I can be, you know, race, I can have the belief of racism and, and all of that. Because, you know, to some degree, I won't lie. I'll say, yeah, there's some things that I would say. Overall, black people are better in some degree, some things. Um, but I don't go out and act on them and say, well, black people are better at this. Black people, I, don't, I don't do that. That's, you know, that's not where, where it becomes an issue. So for somebody, most, most people won't know that you have that belief of racism, especially if you don't become the racist and act on it. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I said, because I said this was going to be, you know, I'm going to just be 100% honest on my end. Um, I have said some things <laughs> that they have been, and by me saying them out loud um, and to particular people, I could see where a particular person would think I was racist. Um, because if I'm 100% honest, I have said things. Now, mind you, I have not said a racial slur, but I have said some things that would have been probably considered racist directly to somebody. I have, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's very interesting as I move on to Queen Levon. Have you ever, have you ever had a uh, experience racism, a racist, however we're going to use the, um, you know, use the terminology. Have you had a racial incident at any point in your life? And if so, share it. I almost hate to say, but being black, you almost expect to have, you know, it's almost like an expectation. You are, I don't know if anyone could say that they've never, any black person could say that they never experienced a bit of racism. Um, I, but I would say probably my first, my earliest, or at least probably the one that I remember the most would have been when I was um, in, I think, middle school, high school, somewhere in there, around 15 or 16, you know, when you're first able to start working. And um, I was actually working at McDonald's. And I never forget we had a um, manager there that was, I didn't think, you know, at first I didn't realize that she had a thing against black people until, you know, I, you know, realized that how she treated me and other, some of the other people where she almost thought we were like dirty or nasty or something like she wouldn't, she treated us more like pets. Like we were, you know, subservient to her and were pets. And it was like, you know, she didn't really want to touch touch you, but she would pat you on your head. Like, oh, you know, like she's surprised that you you speak English. You know, you know, I just remember one day, like, like, you didn't think I could speak English? You know, just like surprised some of the the things. But I remember that um, experience thinking like, wow, um, like really, you know, like I never, I didn't think that you could be around people, you know, because I had grown up in, I have a mixed family, you know, a very blended family that's full of different um, races. And then 
I was raised to love and to know all people and to, you know, have relationships and be happy and, you know, but to see this in the experience and then to see almost a hatred, you know, I just never forget the day when I left there, it's a hatred, they hear that hatred in her voice to think that, wow, somebody really disliked me because of the color of my skin. And I just remember that at a, you know, at 15 or 16, realizing that and then having to, you know, then look, kind of look at my friends, you know, I was in the band and very active in high school and, you know, you friends with everybody, but then to think like, do they, do they really like me? You know, I just remember that questioning myself. I remember those moments. It's like you lose your innocence and and it's like, this is the real world, black Mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. Mm. True. Yes. Yes. I would say I, I mean, I could probably say growing up, I might have saw a little here, there, um, but it was huge when I moved to Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I said, growing up in New York, we knew it was there, but because, you know, we, we, we've been taught about it and what have you, but we, I didn't see it like that. And I moved to Florida and I was going to a Walmart and I was in the parking lot waiting for someone to back out. So I could pull in, and as they backed out, I pulled in, and apparently it was an older white lady that felt that she should have gotten the spot, even though she just bit the corner. Um, and she waited till I got out the car. She stopped behind my car and just waited till I got out the car, and called me an ignorant n-word. Wow. Um. So. Not having ever experienced that, and here I am, young 20, you know, I'm ready to pop off now. I mean, I'm just (laughs) going to be honest. I'm ready. I'm looking for her. And I think she understood at that moment that I was not in the right mind frame because as she parked and started walking towards the store and saw me standing outside the store still waiting for her to get to the store, she quickly took her children and turned around and got back in the car and left. But I I didn't, at the point, like I said, I've known about it, you know, you, you, you know, it, my parents have talked about it and they taught, you know, but to have had experienced that, you know, in my mind, it was like, you waited for me to open my door to say that, like you could have been mad and said that in your car and kept going, but you waited and to, to know that that's not something you just said because you were upset about a parking spot. It, it, that right. wasn't it. It was that superior thought that I'm white, you're black, you should have moved and let me park there. Mm. And because you didn't, and and it just, it infuriated me. It it really did. It infuriated me. And and the way I saw it was like, you have children in the car and you're teaching them this. So come on over here and let them get the full lesson of what happens when they act like that. That was my thought. I won't lie. Um, might not have been right, but like I said, I was in my early 20s. I might have been 20, 21, I don't know, somewhere in there. But I was fully prepared to to help teach her children the lesson of when you decide that you want to stop and talk to a black person in that manner, here's some consequences that you're going to have to deal with. Um, do, you, do you think your reaction would be different if that happened today? Yeah, it would be. It would be because... When I have a child of my own, and regardless to whatever you say or do, I'm not going to allow you to take me from him. And then, two, because I know better. I know better. The way I see it, here's here's the thing. At the end of the day, people only, those words only have power if you give it power. And if you can see that the word infuriates me and upsets me, then that it's still that same thought process that, that carried on from slavery that I can control you by the mind. I can upset you. I know what ticks you off. I know how to control you and make you do this so that this will happen to you. But if I take back the power of saying, well, that doesn't bother me because I know good and well that that's not me. Because, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I know that that doesn't even pertain to me. Um, and I still smile and wave at it. See, I know now, like, how, how, my get back, smile and wave. Okay, thank you, you know. And now you're mad because what you did didn't have the effect mm-hmm. you thought it was going to have. 
But no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get out here and and you know want to jump off the, the, the side real quick and and put paws on you and give you all the smoke. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> now, like I said, when I was 2021, you would have caught all the smoke. Let me say this: I didn't realize Florida had as much racism. Um, because when I see a lot of different things on YouTube and stuff like that and hear different things, it's going on in Florida. And I'm like, what? Florida? You know, um, just want to throw that out there. But my the sunshine state. Huh. Right. Yeah, they, they are. Um, trust me, they are here. <laughs> they are. Uh, and don't quote me, but I'm 99.9% sure. Back in the lynching days, Florida was number one. I would say my earliest uh, experience of racism and being that I grew up in California uh, and my mom was different. If anybody ever calls you the N word, you better fight. But when I was like, I don't know, maybe second, third grade, they had this little white boy that lived across the cul-de-sac from us in California. And I never forget his name was Freeman. And I never, I can't remember what it was he wanted to play with us or something happened. He got into it with my stepsister or something. I can't remember the incident. All I know is he called me the N-word and proceeded to run in his house. Well, mm-hmm. I'm more scared of my, what my mama would do if I let it slide. So I proceeded to run in his house behind him, hit him, and ran back out. Nobody should be surprised by this if they know me. Um, Not at all. And it was, and it stuck in. I mean, think about how long ago it was, but it stuck in my stuck out my mind because that was the first and only time I've ever been called the N word to my face. I'll say that. Um, And I just knew you're not gonna call me that. And I've never looked at myself as a as a N word. However, I don't look at myself as a B word either. But. I believe, you know, now it, the reaction would be similar. I mean, I may not put them paws on you because I'm claustrophobic. I'm not trying to go to jail. But I will make you. If you verbally assault me, I'm in fear for my life. I will mess all your pupils up with the mace, stun gun, what have you. I don't know if I could just, if somebody would say that to me and I could, you know, smile and walk away. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. I could say what I think I would do, and I, and I think we all do that when this happens. We say what we think we would do, but you know, unless it happens, you don't know. But something, something that makes me mad because I hear this all the time, and I'm gonna go to Queen Levon with this one. Uh, when you hear people say, "I don't see race. I'm colorblind." Well, I guess y'all can't see me shaking my hand. <laughs> yes, that is probably one of the absolute craziest things to say. I understand, you know, what they're trying to convey that, you know, I am love I love people. But you can't say that you don't see race and you don't see color because when you look at people, you see before anything. We look, we look at people and we size them up and down. You know, when you walk up to somebody the first time, you do that quick once over at the toe. Uh-huh. We do that. So you going to tell me when you do your head to toe, you didn't know this, no color? Because if you say you colorblind, that means you don't understand and didn't see any of the colors that they got on. Thing is, even when you colorblind, you can see lighter and darker shades. So you know somebody that's a darker shade and somebody that's a lighter shade. But, you know, I get what the person is trying to say but the thing is why not see color why not see race because nine times out of ten you know i know we do oh you know the little white girl or the little black girl we use race to describe people and it's but i think only time you have to worry about if you're colorblind or if you don't see color Usually you need to check another layer down because maybe one or two layers up under there, if you have to tell yourself that, then maybe you need to go peel back a few more layers and see what is being harbored under there because something is just hovering just below the surface that you have to say that because I think it goes back to it being an action word, you know, a verb. 
if you truly don't see color and you're colorblind and you're not racist or having racist, feel like you're having any type of racism, then it's going to be apparent in your actions. Those are people that you usually need to look at with the closer. Yep. <laughs> you just need a little closer. <laughs> I've had somebody say that before, and I'm like, don't take away from my blackness. I want you to take in all of this, all of my blackness. So a lot of times people would say they're not racist because they have that one black friend. Mm-hmm. So it's okay if they use a, use the N-word. And recently they had a um, a coach that got fired because a video surfaced of him using that word. And, of course, it's always that, I'm not racist. I have a black friend. <laughs> Go ahead, Queen Shannon. Um, yeah, I'm just going to – it's just – that's a lie. It's just a lie. I mean, it's a lie. Um, right, like, at the end of the day, just because you have a black friend – it, it does not mean that you, like I said, I, t- I believe that we all have a belief of racism somewhere. Yeah. So you having one black friend does not take away the fact that you believe that your whole race of people in some form or fashion is superior to all the others. Mm-hmm. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't take that, that whole thought process away. And, in fact, nine times out of ten, you have that one black friend so that you can try to pull that one black card. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. It's, it's, it, I have it because that's the very first thing they say every time that something comes up in that manner. The very first words out of their mouth, it's never, um, well, you know, let's talk about this so that you can get to know me. It's never that. The defense is always, I have black friends. Is that what you have them for to use that every time? So, And I have questions because there's levels up to black. It That's is. That's a whole other show, but there's levels to blackness. It is. Now, it's a whole different story. You can't count the ones that don't think that they're black. That's not going to work for you. You right. can't You really use them because there are some that do not, that in fact do not think that they are black. You know, I actually work with a girl, um, and her big issue with me, uh, she told my boss her issue with me is because she really don't like black people. And she's black. Mm-hmm. I don't understand because, you know, she says, but, you know, people always ask me, are you from Jacksonville? They can tell you're not, I'm not from Jacksonville because I'm not ratchet like the Jacksonville girls. And then, excuse me, I'm just going to be extra petty here. I look at her, and if anybody has ever seen Low Down Dirty Shame, have you ever, do you remember the character Wayman? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the way his and the way his hair looks. I have some distant relatives that if I would definitely say they think they're I, I don't want to say better than black, but better than black people. And it's a uh, it, it's kind of that's one of those things that's kind of hard to put into words. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I think that's self hate. Mm-hmm. That people have, you know, because of, you know, the racism, and it, it's cool for me if I tell somebody I don't like black people. Like, that means that we're on the same level. I'm not saying it's for, for me, but I'm saying, you know, in somebody's mindset like that. And at the end of the day, um, you still are N-word. That part. And I think... And here, here's here's something, um, and actually it's, it's kind of, you know, odd that we've been having this conversation because I recently just um, had my son read the Willie Lynch letter um, in the making of a slave. And, you know, at first I thought he might be too young, but I'm like, mm, no, he's he's going to read this a couple of times. He'll read it now, and, I'm, and you know, and I'm going to continue to have him read it so that he can understand why, you know, black people hate them, each other, why you know, you know, why, why racism is what it is and how they felt about us and how, you know, from slavery, how we were compared to just simple breeding of, with horses and things of that nature. Like we have to understand the own self-hate aspect of it. And, and 
people won't, don't want to accept it or even understand it, but we were taught to hate ourselves. We were taught to not like each other. They, these were things we were taught from slavery, and it's just something that trickled down and passed down, and we kept going with it. These were things that, that you know, that were embedded in, in us before we even had the chance to, to learn or, or to, to figure things out ourselves. So, you know, it's important that we, we brush up on that, and it's important that, you know, that's why I, when um, you asked earlier would I react the same way, that's why I wouldn't act the same way, because I understand now. Because, see, I hadn't read anything about the Willie Lynch letters then. I hadn't read about post-traumatic slavery. I didn't read any of those things at 2021. But at the point where I'm at now, having read that, I understand where what it is. I see it for what it is, and I know now I don't have to act on it because I know exactly the end result of it, what the goal and the purpose of all of that is. Probably what you want, but you better be saying right. Arm to arm <laughs> exactly. Don't 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 come close enough with it. But like it was, yeah, it's the same. You know, it's the same way she did it then. Like just stopped her car behind my car, waited for me to get out, just to scream this at. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I still got this parking space, and you didn't buy. <laughs> Let's take a break right here. Make sure you tune in next week for part two of our show. Dealing with Racism as a Black Woman in America. Thank you for listening. And remember, your past doesn't define you. It gives you definition. And what you do with that is up to you. Thanks for listening to Define You Radio. Make sure you connect with the show at www.defineuradio.com. Pens and papers down. Class dismissed.